Roxy Sox. <gasps> Good morning, Tam Tam. I feel like we've been doing this for months and months and months, but it's only been a couple of weeks, but I feel like quarantine life is killing me slowly. How about you? Yes, yes. It's actually, this week has really picked up the pace as far as killing me. Yeah. I feel like I'm, I'm downhill now. <laughs> yes, we are going downhill. fast. <laughs> in like a fast roll and roll. Yeah. Yes. And now it's just us. It's, it's like an avalanche <laughs> down. <laughs> so to give ourselves a little bit of a pick-me-up, guys, I have asked Lindsay Shaw, <gasps> a.k.a. as you remember her as Paige on Pretty Little Liars, but we, yes. Tam and Sosak, remembers her in so many other ways than just that show. But I thought just for you, while you're at home and being quarantined, we wanted to say hi. So welcome, Lindsay. Woo! I was so honored to get this invite. Y'all are like the coolest ladies on the internet. And, <laughs> and I'm very, very honored to be a part of it. And I appreciate it. Tam and I always like, you know, have a special affinity for you. I felt like we were close on set and stayed in touch a little bit after that. So, and I remember seeing you riding your bike with your family way back when in West Hollywood. And well, I, just love I you. maybe I the point 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 I have not learned how to ride a bike. <gasps> Do you know that? Like, I cannot ride a you bike. You can't. Well, ride that, I, this I swear, I saw you on the streets in West Hollywood. It was maybe just pushing <laughs> your baby stroller. My husband was probably like biking and I was like sitting in the back like a child because that's the only thing I've can't, well there's a lot of things I can't figure out but that's definitely one of them so what did you so you posted a picture of you bicycling your daughter not too long ago was that a fake pic a fake video oh I wasn't Roxy I wasn't bicycling Sean was doing the work I was sitting back and my daughter was in the back pedaling and I was like this isn't so hard and then Sean said well why don't you take the driver's seat which I did and I was like Fuck this. I was like this is way I was like, I didn't ask for exercise and fun. I was like, no. So yeah, they were bicycling, but I was just sitting back and enjoying the ride. So Lindsay, how's quarantine going for you? Quarantine goes up and down every minute, every hour, as if that wasn't already my mental state. And I say that with all reverence towards mental health, um, but it's hard. It's hard. I barely was holding on to, to a routine. Routine's hard for me anyway, but um, since getting sober and rehabilitating and yada, 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 yada. Um, holding on to routine is even, you know, harder. And so right as I was getting like back on this routine in LA, because I just came back to LA in April after being gone for two years mm. for my mental health, mm -hmm. um, that, that routine is kind of pulled out from under me. And I'm feeling a lot of like memories of when I used to be doing not good things for myself by being isolated, mm -hmm. but yeah. I feel the pain of the isolation now because I just like, wasn't aware enough to feel like how sad I was when I was on all the, you know, but it just feels like the same way. So anyway, that's like, whatever, but it just, it's heavy and it's hard, but mm -hmm. I'm on TikTok. So we're good. <laughs> yes. Babe, I'm so happy you're on TikTok. You commit oh, I just, so hard. Oh man, I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm like, I look like a <laughs> old lady trying to figure out a TikTok <laughs> dance. Um, you talk about being sober. Now, I we never talked about this, but I knew something was going on just because I've suffered not from um, alcoholism or drugs or anything like that, and I don't know exactly what you're getting sober from, but from my own mental health struggles and. I always just wanted, I remember I just always wanted to hug you and to say like, it's going to be okay. Cause like, I've been there, you know, um, what gave you the impetus to get better? Mm. Like when was that aha moment? And you don't have to talk about any of this if you don't want to, because no, it is know. just a and relaxing I podcast. It because it's like <laughs> a source of shame for me that if it doesn't come to light and maybe this isn't the right light, but I ain't in therapy right now because honey can't afford it. <laughs> but anyway, I know there's a lot of ways to get help. I just, I maybe haven't found the right therapist to help me, whatever. I, I was driving down the street and I was doing a play for this thing called the, uh, the blank theater. They have a cool, mm -hmm. um, young writers program. And I was part of this young playwright. She was 18 making this play and like acting is my most favorite and free time ever. And it was no longer an escape for me during those last two years I was trying to hold on in LA. And I remember driving down the street and I was throwing tantrums in my car. I was like mm -hmm. screaming out the car. Like, I don't want to be doing this. I don't know what mm -hmm. I'm doing, but I was like crying, screaming out the car out of control. And dude, I look across the, I, I, I look across the street and who's driving the other direction and stop with just his window down staring at me, Ian Harding. <gasps> I know him. Oh yeah. gosh. I wow. thought you were going to say Ian Ziering. I was like, I know him. I was like, yeah, <laughs> Ian Harding. Uh, so he saw you. you he saw you, know you yeah. too, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do. Um, so, so he saw it, you. It was, 
And we never spoke about it. And like, he drove the other way, but it was just like, I was broken. I was Mm -hmm. totally broken. Mm. And the velocity of me carrying forward, trying to just act like I wasn't had stopped. Mm -hmm. And I just, even though it felt like death, I, I had no other recourse. Mm -hmm. I I had to leave. Like I couldn't leave my house when I was here without being wasted. I would feel like there was voices in my head. I would feel like everybody was judging me, but not like the social anxiety was crippling. Mm -hmm. So what was it? What was that when you finally did decide to get sober? What was that process like for you? Was it something where you sort of took you to mention you took yourself out of Los Angeles, um, working on yourself? What was what did that look like for you? Shameful. People would come up to me in Arizona and be like, oh my gosh, from Pretty Little Liars. I didn't want it. I didn't want it. Like before it would be the most flattering Mm -hmm. and uplifting thing. I didn't want it at Mm -hmm. all. Like I felt so disconnected from it. I felt like failure. I felt like I failed it. I felt like it failed me. Mm -hmm. Um, And I thought I was going to be there for three to six months. Mm -hmm. Like I was there for two years. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it, it was deep. It, It was me reconnecting with my family by pulling weeds and cleaning the patio, just being normal, reading books, going to AA, finding sponsors, like all this mundane stuff that, getting close to my mom again, you know, like Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all this stuff that I neglected for so long. Um, and it's still like a struggle every day. Like what I would get resentful for still the most about it is that it's still a struggle. Mm -hmm. And it always, yeah, Mm -hmm. it always feels like I put in the time, you know Mm -hmm. what I mean? It just feels like I, like I tried, why does this keep happening? Like, why doesn't this this mindset still work? Why does evolution still like duh? Because you still got to evolve and it's still got to blah 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 blah. Mm-hmm. But I just hate that you're never there. And it's like, girl, the process, not the product. Like I enjoy the process of acting mm-hmm. way more than I enjoy the product of what I see because mm-hmm. I feel you could have gone here, you could end blah blah blah. blah. You're never supposed to be happy with your performance, but it's just like, yeah, just the process is. You know, know, you know what I've figured out because I've had my own mental health issues and you're like, for me too, I I just thought, you know, why some days are great and why are they just terrible? Why do I still have to fight this fight? But the only thing that you can do when you have so much pain is acceptance. It's the only thing that will move you in some kind of positive direction because we feel like we're going to wake up one day and everything is going to change, but these grooves are so deep and they don't just get fixed overnight. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you and I have a similar upbringing, maybe not with our families, but I was a young actress in Australia who was 13, 14, 15 years old. And I got very successful, very fast. And I think it didn't give my brain time to fully form I think the frontal lobe of my brain was always confused at constantly wanting attention from other people and that I was never good enough without it. And it gave my dopamine rush in my body and my brain so much from such a young age that I was never, I was never a fully developed person, I don't think. And, and that's why I look at child actors and I don't know if it's the healthiest thing mm-hmm. for putting the pieces of the puzzle together as a human. Does that make sense? Right, babe. Like so much, like so much. And I, I, I always felt kindred to you. I always felt, you know what I mean? I always just like, I loved your presence on set. I loved the fact that I got to see you, um, you know, pregnant. And then like you brought your daughter, your first daughter on set and like this evolution of who you were. Cause you were a wild child, like this feisty and <laughs> you know what I mean? You had a feisty, like fucking energy. Have this baby and go through this and be, I don't know. It was a cool experience for me. And I've appreciated being a voyeur on your life ever since. And, um, but you still have that energy about you, but it's, it's grounded and you have just this beautiful family and, um, it's definitely something that I, you know, yearn for. I feel you like just never having to de- develop fully as a person and yeah, just not like trying to live in the shame of that. Do you think because you came to Hollywood young and you sort of grew up in Hollywood and, you know, worked and all that, do you think that that, um, like affected you, you know, and c- contributed to maybe down the line, like what you went through? Absolutely. Yeah. 
I think everybody's choice at any time, like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. For sure that choice at that young of an age to like, you know, and in a lot of ways I think it, and in a lot of ways it's, it's hard. Everybody wants what they don't have and who would have knows if life would have turned out in a different way. It feels like I want to blame my mom, but Mm -hmm. she's not the issue. You know what I mean? Um, I I appreciate what she did for me and I appreciate like, Mm -hmm. you know, I appreciate that, but Mm -hmm. she gave me a lot of opportunities I never would have had. My mind opened in a way it never would have, um, if I had stayed where I was, I, I feel, (laughs) I feel like I always would have played it safe. I feel like she taught me so many things that I'm only now starting to appreciate. And I don't want to hate her for those decisions. I want to, you know, she was doing what she thought was best and, I'm the one who descended into drugs and alcohol. I'm the one who like let those triggers and blocks stop me. Mm -hmm. And to look at yourself and and feel okay or or to feel like, yo, those were, that was your journey. It's okay. Like the shame doesn't have to be there. It'll also not blame her. Yeah. Like there's nobody but yourself Mm -hmm. to like, say where you are in life. So, and your parents just do, you know, Roxy has a six year old daughter and I have two and, Mm -hmm. um, we go to the same school together and it's like, oh, parents, yeah, that's super how we cute. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. And we parents met. just do the best that they can. Like, yeah. We're all like fucked up individuals who are just trying to do better than what we got taught. And then we just try to hand down the tools that we have to our children. So hopefully they can be better parents and better mothers than, than we were. I mean, you just do the best with what right. you're given, you know? And I think we, we do blame so much of the people around us or our family members. And we realize like at some point we have to be accountable, you know, yeah. we have to Amen. be accountable. Yes. At some point Amen. you can't be 45, 50 years old going, well, my mommy did this. It's like, at some point it's yeah. your turn and your chance to fucking change right i'd say 18 to 21 is like the last time you can be like my mom my dad unless they did something <laughs> so horrible to you that it like you know what i mean I'm, I'm, I'm talking about like within a balance but like you start to choose to live in that behavior or to mm-hmm. change it you know and i've been listening to that ray lamontane song that empty song like <laughs> i choose instead like i've never learned to count my blessings i choose instead to dwell in my disasters yeah and it's like I, I really want to change that about myself. Mm -hmm. Well, and kudos to you, Lindsay, too, for like taking that step and taking yourself out of a situation that you knew was unhealthy um, and working on yourself, you know, and really taking that journey. Absolutely. Uh, That's amazing. Um, How did you know? And when did you know it was the right time to come back to Los Angeles? I've been talking to a friend and he wanted to come back to Los Angeles at about the same time. And we talked and talked about it. He had a place here. I was like, no better way to start than with a roommate and half the expenses and whatnot. And, Mm -hmm. um, that situation ended up blowing up in my face within the first week of him being here. And Uh I, I was like, you're either going to commit to like trying to be here or not. And, and so I got a place on my own and I've been trying to make it work ever since. And I still don't know if it's going to work. And I, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Like, that's okay. Mm-hmm. I just, I just don't know. You know what I mean? And I just want to try to just be more open to what life has for me. I want to perform so bad. I love mm-hmm. teaching it. I, I would love to be a teacher. I would love to just, because what acting is for me is like the most sacred thing in my life. Mm-hmm. And why, while it's so superfluous, I feel like when it's done, in a beautiful way as Tammy, you understand, like it just like it, first of all, television raised me. And so it raised a lot of my emotional intelligence and I felt for those people more than I could feel for the people in my real life. Cause I didn't feel safe with them. Mm-hmm. And so my life between action and cut is the person that I wish that I could be always, but it's mm-hmm. like, I love it so much that I know there's a, there's a place for me here. Mm-hmm. Um, if I can just like hold on to it and mm-hmm. if I don't, whatever, that's cool too. But and maybe success I'm, looks different as you get older, you know, like yeah. for me, if I don't have the career that I wanted, I feel like I failed in a way, but mm-hmm. maybe it's just going to look different. Maybe it doesn't have to be the most successful person in the room or make the most money. Maybe it's just to entertain people and to make a difference through art and connect with people through what I love to do. And it's funny because lately I said to my husband, I'm like, when did it stop becoming fun? Like why, you know, 
it's not fun these days. It's about auditioning and trying to get the job and feeling rejected and feeling like you're not good enough and self auditing yourself while you're in the actual scene. Like when did it stop being fun? And he said, well then make it fun again. And I was like, well, that's why we started creating and we created Aussie girl and whaling and all that stuff is because the genesis of that was just being so dissatisfied in not enjoying the job that I was think I'm born to do. Mm -hmm. So it's like when you bring Mm -hmm. fun back into it, then it has a whole different meaning and it doesn't, then you don't get as depressed when you don't get the job because you're not wanting it for fame or for money. You know, you're just wanting it. You just want to enjoy yourself. So in this day and age, in the and that's what I feel about Aussie girl, even when I saw it, like I haven't seen the full thing yet, but even when I saw it, it felt so authentic, Mm -hmm. so funny. So like, just like you were having fun, like that's what it felt about it. And that's why I was like, that's what, I, that's the kind of stuff I want to do. Well, and, like, make. Maybe the definition of success isn't even like success in the way we're, we're talking about it. Maybe it is just finding mm-hmm. your happiness and whatever yeah. that looks like. It could be, it could be the most successful person or it could be the person at home, like with a family. And you know, it's like, mm-hmm. it's and like, it's like, right. Well and like, right. Has a good consistent foundation. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. It's like finding that inner peace, I think is very, that is a good marker. I think for success is like finding that inner peace and like that happiness and really that guide, you know? And when did we start doing it for other people? I was Mm -hmm. just like, we, we, we want to make more money so we can buy things to show other people that we have things. And that makes us more unhappy. It's like, we just do it for other people. Like we need to go back to basics and go back to why am I an entertainer in the first place? You know? And and do you believe, like, don't you think that's what this quarantine is kind of doing? Like Mm -hmm. it's going to like, and, and I, and I don't wish, um, bad times on anybody, mm-hmm. but I'm just saying, I feel like it's shrinking back down to the necessity. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I feel like our ambitions have been a little bit overblown and it has overblown our resources. It has overblown our mm-hmm. ideas of ourselves. It has overblown, um, you know, you're packaging together these things that don't work just to make money. And that doesn't make sense. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you're, you're squandering so many lovely ideas because you're not, <sighs> you're putting money before the product. Mm-hmm. You're not serving the project ever. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's like, you know, n- no hard times on anybody, but I, I, I what do you think? What do you think about that in this whole quarantine? Oh, I think the world is turned on. Like it's, it's forced us to take a mirror and look at ourselves, you know? And it's, I think there's so this how do I say this? But you're right. Like, I don't wish any ill on anyone, but I think it's also an extremely positive thing for people to look at themselves and to change and to figure out who they are without the noise, you know, and it's forcing families to be together. Yeah. And it's forcing you to really go back to the basics because you can only be on technology and doing these things for so long until you get bored. And it's like, you are forced to be with the people that you're, that you're around, you know, around you and like your close family and friends and things like that. It really forces you to reevaluate and look into yourself and look into your relationships, you know, and really kind of examine that, you know, and see, and I don't know about you, Lindsay, but like, I talk about this with Tam. And like, I am not somebody who likes to be vulnerable. <laughs> no. at she all. keeps moving. She <laughs> yeah, does yeah, not yeah. stop. Is, is there a punchline that I yeah. can grab for? <laughs> yeah, right. I'm like, uh, yeah. So basically, vulnerability <laughs> is not my comfortable place. I don't like right. it. But this right. whole quarantine has made me really have to be vulnerable. I mean, because mm-hmm. you can only be, and I can only be an asshole for so long to my husband until I'm like, fuck you, this, You're blah, blah, blah. Nice. This, I have to be nice. I had to you let have my to give girl- him a job. Come on. Be I a know. good wife for a God. second. Quarantine blood job. My husband gets so <laughs> my husband's like over husband, it for like, me. There's only yeah. so long that you can be tough with yourself without having things to externally go and do. Right. You know what I mean? There's right. only so tough. There's only so long that you can hold up that facade for yourself. Right. Right. And but it's easy when there's distractions from the outside world, you know, it's easy. It's easier when you can go somewhere or go to an event. I have to do this. Right? I have to grab this for this. Yes, I have to yes. like do this and I'm being productive. I'm being helpful and being yes. considerate. Like, but are you being that to yourself? No. Nope. Like my, my answer to myself is nope. Nope. And Mm-mm. that's hard to look at without yeah. shame. That's hard to look at without shame. 
Like it I'm is. doing something that doesn't serve me mm-hmm. and I'm choosing to do it, but I'm not going to shame myself into it because that's only going to make me revert to the behavior more. And I have this whole problem with shame. It's like my middle name. Mm-hmm. Um, need to it's even to a Brene joke Brown. within my family. Mm-hmm. Like, Brown, for shame, Brown. for shame. And I know it's a joke, but so much truth there. But the evil part of it <laughs> is that there's a mixed message because like you're saying, when you do all these outside things and you're not serving yourself, you're still getting the positive effect of like, oh, I'm being productive. I'm doing this. And somebody's happy because of what I'm doing, except you're not happy yourself. So it's like because this. it's stroking your ego, yeah, not your spirit. Right, right, right. Yeah. You're stroking other yeah, people, people's, which yeah. is giving them, like, they're giving you validation because you're doing something for them. Right. You know what I mean? Like, and I don't mean that they're selfish people either, but like right. that validation is not validating to the soul. It's validating to the ego. To the ego. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. Did you have a good experience on Pretty Little Liars or was it a little bit of, it was a little up and down for you? Mm. Do you really remember it fully? And I say that, and then do you remember it fully? The whole experience? I, I, I do. I, I do okay. remember it. I do remember it fully because it was big for me. I, mm-hmm. I You know what I mean? It, print, it imprinted on my memory deeply. Mm-hmm. But I think I have a lot of self-shame or the downward spiral that I was going in the entire time I was doing that. Mm. Um, I... So I have a lot of blame for myself. I admire Shay Mitchell more than I can say, although we have almost nothing in common. And I feel like I gave her a lot of chances to lose respect for me. Mm -hmm. And um, that's still really painful for me. I feel like I remember one day going to set and for some reason, like this was just after something really traumatically personal had happened for me and I wasn't getting the right help for it. Mm -hmm. And I remember... I literally couldn't stop crying. And when I say that, I mean like that was never like me. I've worked on set for 20 years. That's, And I would look at anybody in the eyes. I looked at Lucy in the eyes. I looked at Shay. I looked at my makeup artist. I, and then I finally looked at the sound lady. Like I couldn't stop crying when I connected with people's eyes because I just hadn't dealt with what I'd gone through. And she just looked at me and was like, you're going to get through this. Wow. But anyway, so the problem is I blame myself for a lot of that. But I think also I felt a lot of... Um, I just didn't feel that close to the creators of the show, even though I, cause I think they could see what, like what I was going through too, but I just mm-hmm. didn't feel very respected. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes when I was on the show, I definitely was felt to be respected by some of the writers and the, and, and the people and the whole crew for sure. But, um, I don't know. Um, how, how, did, how did you feel, Tamman? My experience was a good experience. Um, I think like you, I'd come from shows where, and I don't know if people, well, our listeners probably aren't on film and TV, but when you're not like number one, two, three on the call sheet, there's a different, there's a different feeling of Mm. where you fit in. Mm -hmm. And I hope moving forward, any sets that anyone is on of mine, um, I want to make sure that everyone feels like they're part of something. Mm. And when you are someone who comes in and out, understandably, you're not part of all the jokes because you don't, you know, understand them because you weren't there every day. Of course. And you're not putting as much face time in. So it's not that you're not as liked, you just don't feel as part of it. Mm-hmm. You don't feel as a part of the, immediate, the, the yeah. immediate family. You don't, yeah, you don't feel like mm. it's part of the family. And, um, and it's a weird lo- yeah. yeah. And for someone who loves to be, like for me, my, I need to feel like I'm part of a community. Of course. And girl, you've always been yeah. one, two or three on the call sheet, right? <laughs> like you're used to that. <laughs> and I don't mean that. I'm sure my ego was like, I want that too. Of course. Oh, anyone right, right. Does. I don't mean it in a mean way, but it's, it, it was, no, it, I, it was I, I like that for, for everybody. I was, uh, yeah. I was like, wait, what do you, <laughs> what do you mean? I'll have to wait until they're <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, like, and I, and that's not a busy way. It's just a learning experience from what our experiences we've had. Wait, so did you guys have a lot of scenes together on set? Like, did you, two of you like work together a lot or no? Girl, I remember, 
remember one thing where I was at your birthday with the drunk cupcake thing. I remember one thing like that. <laughs> and I also remember like a Halloween party or was that your also birthday where we, Wait, no, because so that was like talking, a Halloween so party where we or are you talking up. like on the show? Like on the show. Like on set. Did you guys act together a lot or no? Babe, 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 can I tell you my favorite line that I ever got to say on <laughs> Pretty Little Liars was, Sick. oh, you didn't hear? She can see again. Uh, I know. <laughs> Because I told you, Roxy, I lost, I lost yeah. my sight and then I got it back, which I was so thrilled about. I was like, I can show my eyes and I don't have to look like just a nose on screen. <laughs> it was just a nose. I was just lost. And I was like, fuck. And so they took my glasses off and I was like, I'm seeing the light. And then like, really within like three weeks. Four episodes. Yeah. I was like, oh. I am very upset that I didn't get to break the nose, oh the news god. that it went south. Oh my god, that's a hilarious thing. Like, so, she can't see anymore, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> so your makeup must have been so quick, because you didn't have to put any eye makeup on, right? For like when I you were blind. I made them for makeup on me, because I was like, uh -uh. everyone else looks fucking good. <laughs> I was like, I want to look pretty. They even put lashes sure. on me. They even put uh, lashes on oh me, because I was, like, I was like, I'm sitting here in the oh chair, I'm going to get lashes. I was like, I don't care. Maybe that's why you get into but your parking didn't spot. They make you like a pirate, didn't they make you like a pirate for that one episode? How did that even work? How did that even work? One eye was covered, but that's when I could see. Oh, oh. right. In those four episodes, you could see because you're going to take a chance on those eyes already and just cover yes. one. I remember <laughs> like that. Been covered long oh, enough. my God. That episode was like... Roxy, we were there for like uh, 20 something hours and hours I had no line. Everybody was in that scene. Oh. I had no line. I was like, I'm, I so what were you doing? You were just standing there? Welcome to half my career on Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> <laughs> I was just stood there. Um, I, I literally just looked and the, oh, that's right. And then someone, I think it was Toby, someone pulled my eye, eye patch off and then just flung it in my face. Like that's all that happened. <laughs> that is so, dude, that's on a level of them giving me a nickname of pigskin. Oh my, oh my god okay oh you have god. to admit like wow okay so who was like who was the person that you got along with the least on pretty little liars because we know Marley you love and tam and you don't have i mean you don't have to say what <laughs> i was like king. you don't have to say what. who is it Mar who? marlene king marlene creator <gasps> oh she for some reason had no love for me and when i like because i can feel it Duh, I'm not an idiot. I'm an empath <laughs> for my profession. Like, mm -hmm. she had zero love for me. And I don't know if that's resentment for her own sexuality. And I don't mean to, like, bring this up. I would ask this to her face. But, like, like this one time. Like, I brought a friend to set. Everybody brought friends to set. I wasn't even working that day. It wasn't even on her schedule. But, like, just before we left, I was like, let's take a tour of our sets. Because they were empty. Like, nobody was shooting on them. They were fucking empty, right? Mm -hmm. So I was, like, so excited to show her because she was a big fan, too. And so I showed her, and Marlene King, like, noticed that we were there. And she was like, what are you doing here? Like, didn't ask who my – like, not that you have to ask who my friend was or – just didn't even, like, a feign being cordial. And she was just like, you can't be here. And I was like, yeah, 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 no, no, no worries. We're leaving right now. I just wanted to show her really quick, blah, blah, blah. But that would have passed for literally – anybody else in my mind mm. and I just feel like like she posted a picture on her Instagram and didn't tag me in it and tagged every other person who was in it <sighs> and I was just like that's so rude so Whether, why you don't know why? my story yeah, you don't know if I'm an Instagram you don't know. everybody who was when they wore the um black hoodies like the a hoodies she tagged Toby Tyler uh or um Keegan Tyler and Janelle and mm. just not me and it's like, I have a verified Instagram to, to look up, right. to tag me is so simple. And you do that yeah. so long after the fact. And whether you think that I'm gone doing something else on a hiatus or whatever, it's just, I just feel like she, I never felt close to her. I never felt kindred mm. with her and I didn't understand it because mm. I just didn't understand it. And I'm sure it was because Shay was like, she's making me uncomfortable. She keeps getting skinnier. She obviously has some kind of weird ass drug problem, blah, blah, blah. Shay gave me protein powder at one point because she was like, you're getting too thin. I was yeah. going through a downward spiral and maybe she just would, had no respect for me putting her show in jeopardy. Um, and I can respect that too, but. I don't know. You I know. feel when I see people who are struggling with drug and alcoholism, 
I just go straight to empathy. Like, Mm -hmm. how can I do something or help or be there? Like, when did we shame people and put them down for their own pain? Mm -hmm. Like, when did that happen? You know what I mean? Like, when did we feel like we were God? Mm -hmm. I mean, everyone struggled with something, but it just all looks different. You know, just because you turned to alcohol for your troubles and I turned to, I had an eating disorder when I was 15 years old and that was my thing. And Roxy wants to kill her husband, <laughs> not be vulnerable, whatever her thing it is. It must be something. <laughs> yeah, she's got something. Homicidal <laughs> thoughts. Yeah, she's got, she probably will murder him at some point. She goes in jail. It's just like weird because out of all three of us, I didn't know that she would be the one who really fucked up. I know. Um, she seems like so like, oh, yeah. well, like she'd be the getaway driver, not the, not the perpetrator. <laughs> you don't know what I do after dark. <laughs> but, but with a name like Roxy, we should know. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. Well, I mean, I like, just, I don't know. Empathy, empathy goes a long way. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. And, 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 and the, per, like, if I'm talking cast, the person that I felt like I got along with the least, mm-hmm. um, honestly was Troyan until I mm. was directed in her episode, which was like, I admired her so much and I was so grateful to be a part of that episode. I just, every direction she gave me as a director, I was just like, oh, you're living my dream and you're <laughs> awesome at it. But mm-hmm. she just had a very high standard for people she put in her life. And I know she could tell that there was a little bit of bullshit behind everything I did while I was there to be good, just because I was, I was fucking crumbling. Yeah. And, and I know people, but she, it's not that she put me down for my own pain. She just wasn't going to mm-hmm. get involved in it. And so I just kind of felt like sometimes it was the least warm, but it didn't hurt me in a way that it mm-hmm. felt, it didn't hurt me in a way that it felt intention, like personal or malicious. It's just the standards that she holds for herself. And everybody on that cast was lovely. Mm-hmm. I didn't get to interact with a lot of people, but when I did, um, everybody was so kind. Did you get to do kissing scenes um, on Pretty Little, Little Liars? And if so, did you do open mouth kisses? Because Ian <gasps> yes. told us, Ian told us, Ian, Ian told and, us. Mm-hmm. and uh, uh, well, Keegan told us that they used their tongues. French kissing. I was like, when did I, like, I, was like, yes. I to do? <laughs> I was like, I didn't get the fucking memo. I yeah. Know a Dude, I always thought you did open mouth kisses. First of all, and anything yeah. else I've done, I've done open mouth kisses. No, I've oh. never. Always. Girl, but you've been Shay, missing out. <laughs> Shay was like a great kisser, but here's the thing. She, yeah. I feel like, was so self-conscious. Like, I think she thought maybe I was a real lesbian. And maybe I am. I don't know. Maybe she thought she's enjoying this too much. <laughs> but, like, I would go in and I would be like, girl, I am ready to suck your face in and, like, mm. be a part of this. Because I would fall in love with her on screen. I don't think you understand, like, as an actor and why so many people date. Like, mm-hmm. I wouldn't classify myself as a lesbian, but the, but the amount of love that I cultivated for Shay over that time was like your life between action and cut. Like, it's just different. Mm. And so when I would kiss her, it was like I was ready to go. But she would just, uh, this is how it would be. I would be like, and she would be like, <laughs> like break apart after everyone and just do these tiny kisses. And I'm like, bitch, we have to like, like connect and like move and like touch, you know? Um, and it wasn't, it wasn't exactly like that. And especially towards the end when she was like, I hate that I have to do scenes with this crazy bitch. Um, it was just kind of like, and then after every single scene, she would be like, see, and this is why I go to bed in like nighties and tutus and just remind myself that I'm a feminine girl. I'm like, girl, do you like that a little too much? I mean, people are not, I don't truly believe that everyone's a hundred percent straight or anyone's a hundred percent straight. I think we all have a, you know. Varying degree. With, yeah. I was talking and about, I agree. I've been I agree. with women. And, like, sure. I'm just, woo. <laughs> you got Lindsay's excited. I want to know about that. I want to know. know about that. That. And it wasn't like I was trying to get with her, but it's like, yo, live out the scene truthfully on camera. If it turns you on, it doesn't mean you have to act on it in your real life. That's why we have discretion in our real lives, but we mm-hmm. don't have discretion in our art. We don't have the right to hold that back in our art. And that's maybe just an extremist side of me talking because I'm not able to hold back anything in my whole life. But it's like, commit to me, commit Mm -hmm. to me. I'm not trying to hurt you. And you know that this ends, you know, that this has an end point. 
I'm not hitting you up superficially outside of work and like being like, you know, you know, you know, like it's, it's, it's an experience that's worth having and that affects people so far. Like Paige was one of the favorite characters that I played because I realized how, how far reaching an effect I could have on people's actual journeys in life. And, mm-hmm. and that was really, really special for me. So that, so Shay was the one sort of, that was like your makeup buddy on screen. Yeah. But you can always tell in our posture, how she's just like standing up yeah. and kind of out. And I'm always like leaning in like, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> like my neck and head is always like leaned into her. It's so desperate. Paige was a very needy character. <sighs> I think we can all agree with that, but <laughs> so is Lindsay. Do you think you would have worked more if you played the game better? I am very bad at the game, especially when it comes to syncing up with people who see the vision that I see. Mm-hmm. Like I'm just, I'm, I'm a bad judge of character. I'm naive. I'm gullible. I'm, I trust you at your word. Mm-hmm. I, I have an issue with trust. So I put trust in all the wrong people and not in the right people. You know what I mean? So it's, it's hard to find a team that works for you. And in that way, I wish I would have, I, I, I could play the game better. Um, when I'm on set, it's like my talent, speaks for itself. And I don't mean to be conceited about that, but I give you everything, like everything within me that I know of that point to be as, as, as strong as I can. So when I'm on set, I'm like, fuck you, there is no game, but Mm -hmm. definitely with representation and getting those opportunities, there is a game and I'm terrible Mm -hmm. at it. And, Mm -hmm. and, you know, and I think Tamman's right. Like the only way is to create your own stuff and, and kind of make yourself the leader, you know, the, the, curator of the game. Well, the sad part is the game too is not even just about talent anymore. It's about Mm -hmm. like social media and likes Um, and if you're current and if you're not current, you know, it's like all these other things that play into like the who gets the job and it's like the sad part is maybe not even the most qualified person gets the job now, you know? it's Definitely not the most talented most of the time. Right? And I think that that crosses boundaries too. I mean, it's not only in entertainment, it's everywhere, you know? And and that's, Mm -hmm. that's just, I I mean, that also creates, I think, like self hate sometimes, because if you feel like you're not good enough because of all these mm-hmm. external things, it just is it can be nasty, you know? Yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. nasty. Yeah. yeah. So so what now? Like, yeah. where where do you want to go and what are you doing to put that vision in place? You're like, yes, mom. (laughs) No, no, no. I appreciate that. That's a really hard question for me. And I feel so flighty. Are you acting now? Are you acting now in auditioning? I'm trying. I got dropped by my agent because I had an attitude. Oh oh my gosh. Because I'm not used to not being on the top of their roster. Like I I worked all the time. You know what I mean? I'm not used to coming back and being like, who who are you? You haven't made us any money. Like, Mm -hmm. it's so disheartening. It makes me angry at myself. It makes me fuck you to them. Like, sorry, I'm not, I know you're supposed to go to but I just mean, I just feel so, (laughs) I feel so angry at having to learn how to do this and learn uh, all over Mm -hmm. again. But what I want to do, I want to direct so badly. I feel like it gives me a compassion for the industry that I've never seen and a compassion for people that I've never seen. And it mm-hmm. makes me just like, because you see so many things where you're just like, yes, it's the actor, but it's the director who is supposed mm-hmm. to see that potential and help foster mm-hmm. and bring it out. And, and I would love to do that or just teach acting, just teach an acting class. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, I don't know like how much in front of the camera, like I, I would love to be on a series or even a proceed. Like I would love to be on something. I just, I feel so disconnected from acting at this point that it's, that it's scary. I haven't worked in so long. I feel, Mm -hmm. I feel like I haven't either. Right. Like I would just love to find a family and just be working again. You're you're 30 years old. You've been acting since you were 13 years old because you've had a couple of years off. I had a baby. I'm like, Mm. I said to my husband, can I even do this? Can I even do this? Oh yeah. I forgot the other one. Uh Um, I was like, can I even do this anymore? Like it is in you. You don't lose talent. Mm-hmm. You don't. It's inside you. It just doesn't. It, it can be dormant for a couple of years. Yeah. Sure. Everyone has. Everyone evolves and has different uh, versions of themselves. But you've you've grown so much through this experience of what you've been through. Mm-hmm. Don't waste your pain. Like seriously, yeah. don't go you through your pain it. and then waste it. Like yeah. use it for everything that you need to propel yourself forward. Get that's a gift. 
Don't waste it. And what better way to what better way to use it than in the arts? I mean, that's like the place to to do it. You know, (laughs) to definitely show your pain. I love, I love, babe. I love what you just said. I'm gonna paint it on this lady that I've been like painting. I'm gonna say, don't wait. Because I was like, paint, paint the pain away on my last TikTok. I'm gonna say, don't waste your pain because you're right. Don't don't waste like what I've been through. Like it Mm -hmm. makes me feel the closest to God and the closest to Satan all at the same time. Right. And it's you know. Yeah. Just is honoring it, that balance. Is there anything that you regret? Uh, or is it yeah. all brought you to this place? Like, it. is it all it's worth all brought it? Me to, yeah. I think, it, I, I don't think that those are, those are, those have to be, what do you call it? Diametric, like whatever. Diametrically but, opposed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah directly opposed. Whatever. Mm-hmm. I don't feel like they have to be differing. Yes. I reject things. And yes, I'm grateful for the place that I'm in. Cause I never would have learned the lessons, but the hurt along the way. Mm-hmm was unnecessary. And I wish I would have known that in this lifetime and maybe the next lifetime, it won't be so painful, but the pain is too much. Like the destruction to yourself is too much. Like the internal violence is too much. Mm -hmm. And, um, I regret that it took that harsh, that harshness, but maybe it did. Maybe it required that to like get to where I feel, but I regret things. And yet I'm grateful for, for where I am. Mm -hmm. So no real regrets. I mean, it's really like where you were supposed to be. Yeah. 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 You know, Mm -hmm. you know, you just wish you could minimize the pain along the way for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. But maybe that's not the fucking point either. It's like, we always want to get away from this pain and it's like, just be in it. Like just accept it. Accept Uh, it. Accept Uh, it. uh, Acceptance is so hard though. Sometimes, you know, it's just so hard. Yeah. We're almost nearing out (laughs) one hour. Uh, this has been one of my favorite interviews, actually. I know she's great. We a love lot of people live, in, live behind the veil, and I think that again, the only thing that connects us is authenticity. You yeah. know, um, and also helps people feel less alone in the struggles yeah. that they're going through, because everyone has them. Everyone and has them. By doing this interview, I'm sure you've saved some people's lives. Yeah, so, Dude, it saved my life just talking to you two like queens. So aww. we're good here. <laughs> well, anytime I, I really, anytime you want to see my child's face and and just no, I do, girl. <laughs> I, I stalk your stories and then I rewind them and rewatch them. I'm like, I am such a weird voyeur, but it's so lovely. It's so and nice. Just, just one where I was literally pooping and my daughter was <laughs> literally sitting there doing a dance, going. <laughs> I just want to poop in peace. She's sitting there and I turn to her and she's like, Mama's pooping on the toilet. (laughs) I I realized that there is no... Oh my gosh, what a what a blessing. Well, Lindsay, is that is is a family something that possibly could be in your future? Is that something you're interested in? I faced my and my cousin the other day and I saw her child for the first time and she's oh. pregnant with another one and I weeped. Like oh. tears streamed down my face. Like the first time I watched somebody walk down at a wedding and they stream and you have no idea that this is coming. You have no idea that these things are deep in you. So I think one. I think one maybe. Or mm-hmm. like two, but like I would never want to be selfish and have one just to whatever. Sometimes I like discount my own ability to whatever, but I think maybe. maybe yeah, soon. maybe. They shit a lot. That's yeah, sure. and throw up a <laughs> lot. Literally <laughs> 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 up her back for this thing. I was like. And my husband I was like, can you help me? He's like, it's a one person job. I'm like, this is fucking not a one yeah, person no. job. Like, this is right to her arm. Everywhere. I used a whole thing of like wipes. I was like, that was like, $6.95 on the one kit. And then I felt like a toilet paper runs out. I'm just going to use the fucking wipes. I have a lot of those. Yeah, there you go. That's a oh way. I'm <laughs> freaking out. Oh, hours just wipe yeah, yeah right, just right. take a home that does the same exact yeah thing. make your own bidet make your own bidet at home exactly <laughs> <laughs> we always do a really never have I ever yes so oh really yeah yeah, yeah. quarantine edition okay you go okay ahead, so never have I ever this is during quarantine yeah. um never have I ever grown my armpit hair long <laughs> Wait, do you put one up or down, or do you? You say I have. 
I have. Oh, I have. And all the hairs, my friend. I love it. I have Stacy down there. I always call it Stacy to rock one long vagina hair. And all the rest is like, there's no real hair. Just one. And I feel like it was a commitment to grow her so long. So I just don't want to get rid of her. Not yet. You get a keeper for the quarantine, at least. Yeah. And I feel like if my husband's down there, I'm like, you're lucky to be there anyway. It's like, you know, I mean, just maneuver her. Push her out of the way. Push her out of the way. Okay. Or or maybe it's a, maybe it's a threesome. Maybe it's a threesome. Like Stacy's back and it's like Stacy, and I'm like, don't worry, don't get too excited. It's my, it's now one long hair. Okay, never, never have I ever liked the smell of my farts in quarantine. Oh, I have, and I always will, and I will never understand people who don't. I honestly thought that everybody liked the smell of their own scent. I do. And I do. It, it, okay, good. Okay. Do you? It depends on what you eat, though, right? I mean, it Aren't could you, get. But isn't it like indication of what you've eaten? You're like, oh yeah, I did have that chicken palm. <laughs> right, right, yeah. Yeah, that bean, I did bean burrito. Yep, yep. Wait, so you say something you've never done or something you've done? Um, I don't know. I think you just say I have. That's We make up our own rules here. Never have like, I, yeah. <laughs> don't don't ask questions, Lindsay. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. No, 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 no questions here. No questions okay. here. Like, never have I gone three or four days without showering. Oh. Wait, how many? Three or four? <laughs> Clarify. <laughs> On the fourth four. day, she takes a shower. I'm not doing anything Ooh. in here anyway except playing, but that's that's been the longest I've gone. When I can smell myself. Yes. Yeah. The dogs are moving away yes. from me instead of to me. <laughs> yes. When you... <laughs> <laughs> when you can smell yourself before you get to the room, you know it's, right, right, it's a problem. Right, you're like, right, okay, right. Yes. When you're in, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I can yes. smell myself sometimes in public, I'm like, wow. Can anybody else smell that, or is that just really insecure, paranoid me? A man that has been very <laughs> deep part of your very musty, to say the least. Musty is the perfect word. I love my own musty musk. Yes. Yeah. Okay, okay. You go Never have I ever eaten food out of the trash mm. in quarantine. In quarantine. Mm. Can I tell you something? Oh. I saw, okay, I saw a friend's Insta story, and I totally sympathized with her on this because she had John and Vinny's delivery to her house. Oh, yeah. One of her kids threw away the whole thing of ravioli. That chick fucking had ball. She just opened that thing up. She put it on Insta story. She goes, I am eating this shit out of the trash. She's like, this is John and Vinny's ravioli. I mean, she took a fork to the trash and just right, ate it. Right. I was like, wow. wow. And, 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 wow. Right? Wow. Did somebody... Did somebody remind her we're in the middle of a quarantine or she just didn't, she just didn't, she was a savage and she's like, I'm I think a she savage. Was savage. I don't even mom, care. Savage yeah. mom, savage mom. Okay. Okay. One I, last I, I would, I, I can do it. <laughs> one last one my husband has a fit and does not look after my children all weekend because I've taken so long. Leaves okay. them to be. <laughs> Never have I ever mm. really missed sex in quarantine. Wait, wait, what was that? <laughs> really missed having sex in quarantine. <laughs> I, just, I, love, very I can't I love stop very having nice. sex dreams. I keep oh, dreaming, yes. but they're shameful sex dreams where I should have done something different and I'm shaming myself, but still turned on. It's so oh. weird. You could be ovulating it's too. So Your weird. sex dreams pick up when you're ovulating. I mean, Lindsay mm-hmm. doesn't know about me, but I have really weird fantasies. Like when I watch sexual like porn or anything, it's like, you know, an overweight pizza man who like, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm in love with you. That's unbelievably amazing. Kissing, I like a guy who kissed his car because he was in love with it. And I was like, oh my God, I am so turned on. <laughs> what? He was making He's a out fetish his car. Queen. I don't think you, like, look, to, to be fair to myself, I don't want to be with the guy that kisses his car or comes his car. But the idea no, maybe the guy that goes, maybe the guy that goes down on his car. Sure. Right. <laughs> right. Like Sarah Silverman said, she's like, I enter all these porn categories. Never anything I'd want to happen to me. But no, they, no. They, 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 right? Like these gang bangs and whatever. Like, like guy has sex right, with someone's right. foot. Right. Never. And like guy sticks his bald head in full vagina. Ne- never. But I want to see <laughs> oh it. Can I put my head in your bald vagina? I'm like, I can't right. be with you. Like I'm done. Right. No, no, I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. 
<laughs> oh, oh my god very weird like that but... thank you guys so so much for having me this has been of so course. so cool i love you this is we love you my mood thank you well, well thank you for being so open with us because that i mean that makes yeah, I love you like, i feel com- yeah. comfortable and yeah I love I mean, it. What you're saving lives. So you gotta yeah. remember that too. You're telling the story. Less alone, less isolated. And so Lindsay, where can people find you now? Like social media? Like I am on I am on Instagram at Lady M Shosters and I just joined TikTok. All right. Lindsay dot Shosters, whatever. You're gonna find it from my Instagram, something, 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 but that's about nice. it. We are Women on Top Official on Instagram. And Women on Top Podcast on Facebook. Thank you, Lindsay. We love Thank you. Thank you. I love you so much. Mm-hmm. I love you. So nice to meet you, Roxy. Now, so nice to meet you. I was just going to say, my husband thanks you too, because now you've taught me to be vulnerable and I won't kill him tonight. Yeah. Oh. At least there'll be one less comment. Yes. So yes. Was positive. You saved a life. <laughs> we love that. One less homicide is all we can ask for each day. <laughs> That's right. We, you've done your duty, girl. Yeah. Whatever you can do. Oh. Whatever you can do. Amazing. I love you too, Soul. Oh. Thank you so much. We love and you. Thank you, everyone, oh. for well. listening. Thank you, everyone, for listening. And subscribe, comment. And we are women on top. Oh.